Hey guys, Kevin Cage back with another cryptocurrency update. Hope all is well. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, and let's get into it. So this is going to be Ripple rant number 15, I believe, going over some recent news, sharing, you know, developments, my opinions, be completely transparent with you guys. None of this is financial advice, just one man's opinion. So looking at the top 250 crypto companies to watch in 2020, I think this is kind of painting a pretty evident picture, especially in line with re recent news yesterday. I mean, even just this official document. Remember in April 2020, I believe it was effective April first we had brian brooks the former chief legal officer of coinbase basically now he's spearheading the u.s banking system this is not coincidental i don't know why people are surprised with this at all um i've been bullish many people and i'm assuming all of you guys have been bullish and haven't really had any doubts per se with where this this market's going um obviously right now the u.s office of the comptroller of currency announced that national savings banks and federal savings associations can provide cryptocurrency custody services to their customers banks they're i mean their mouths are watering they see the potential money we're going to have groups i mean obviously even groups have already stepped up like fidelity with their digital assets group and you know backed and all these institutions they're salivating they want to be selling crypto at a premium to people it's a new revenue stream um it's it's kind of defeating the purpose of what the original kind of uh cypherpunks wanted but you guys know i'm here just simply for an roi whether it's, you know, XRP, whether it's, you know, Algorand, Chainlink, VeChain, Quant, ADA, HBAR, XLM, Ethereum, Zilliqa, etc. I think that there's plenty of upside in these assets. So again, just something to read. You guys can go through this as well. Brian Brooks, keep an eye out for this for sure. And the implications, we know Brad Garlinghouse, we know, I mean, he was off by a year or two with his prediction of banks being able to custody digital assets. And of course, XRP is included in that. Um, I saw someone say he had like a one year, who was it? Uh, right here, I was laughing so hard. So we got Dr. Crypto Lee. He said his predictions have a one year delta with Brad Garlinghouse. We remember his prediction. And then he did a little gif here with Jim from the office 2020 to 2018. And he's like so close. So really, really funny. I thought that was hilarious. I remember when he made this prediction, everybody was talking about it because it was a very bold statement to say that banks would be custodying, meaning holding, securing digital assets. So this is really paving the way for, you know, things like poly sign and standard custody. So keep an eye out on that for sure. All right, let me see what else I'm missing. Right here, even Yeshua Taylor pointing out something interesting regarding, you know, cryptocurrencies considered being securities. His YouTube channel, definitely check it out. I don't need to go into those details right now. And let's see. So again, with these 250 companies, again, Vega Protocol catches my eye, guys. We're looking at remittance. We're looking at on-demand liquidity for XRP, but there's going to be many, many other use cases and benefits specifically with the internet of value and payments vega protocol we've talked about them we've gone through their website obviously derivatives are going to be a behemoth keep an eye out we can talk about signum i mean i i have trouble kind of looking at these groups and i can like instantaneously see who's you know related to who you can talk i mean you know got fetch ai which is going to be a complete sleeper as well i think all boats are going to rise with you know coming tide the question is who has the best boat and who's catching the biggest wave all right, so we're looking at all of these again. Huge connections, essentially. Um, just look at the backing between these groups. I mean, Securitize has investments from not only SBI, Coinbase, and Ripple. I think they're going to successfully successfully tokenize a lot of value and kind of make that bridge and kind of make it less uh, controversial with value. All right, so just something to keep an eye on and be mindful when you guys are trading on some you know unregistered un. I guess, yeah, unregistered exchanges, because some people are trading on exchanges that have very little liquidity, don't really require, you know, true verification from a KYC AML standpoint. Be safe, guys. I, I know I made a joke on Twitter and I said some of you are trading on exchanges that I wouldn't touch with a 589 foot pole. Be safe. All right. So we talk about that um, again. And then I even saw, you know, who had a really good video yesterday. First time tuning in because King Solomon pointed it out was a uh, crypto siege. I believe it's C E E J. Awesome channel. Really, really like it. And I mean, you know, he's he said the quote and we've heard it before, but essentially saying with, you know, crypto assets specifically, this is the asset class that will swallow all other asset classes. And now we are simply just watching the infrastructure being built to bridge the traditional markets with the future. Everything's being tokenized. Obviously, 2020 has been one for the books. You don't need to hear me go over that again. But I don't think we should be the least bit surprised by the recent crypto news. We know relationship to Steve Mnuchin and Trump. We can talk about advisors and board of directors on Ripple. And then even some other high-tiered individuals for other crypto asset projects. 
we know the high caliber people supporting this ecosystem. They stand to gain, you know, as much and in some ways even more than we do. Distributed ledger technology, and obviously blockchain is just a subset of that type of tech, is not going to be a cool trend. It's not going to be a fad. And I'll even go over some quotes. It will become the backbone of the systems we use today for trust. For I mean, if you guys remember what happened with all the sketchy derivatives trading with the Lehman Brothers back during that last financial crisis. It was an ecosystem of mutual mistrust. DLT will level the playing field in more than one way. So just keep an eye out for that for sure. All right, there's no turning back. And that is what I truly, truly believe. So right here, I wanted to share this. So early investor in the internet of value sharing. Remember now, April 20, Brian 2020, Brian Brooks was basically leading the US banking system. All right, the pawn was moving, leaving from Coinbase. We can see May 12th, 2020, JP Morgan Bank takes on Coinbase and Gemini as their first banking customers. July 22nd, we see the OCC allows all national banks to custody crypto and offer banking services. This is huge. I wonder what kind of, you know, regulatory clarity or what, you know, the other surrounding countries are going to do with this. All right. And then he's kind of giving us some additional um, predictions here. So again, take that with a grain of salt, but it is definitely fun to kind of speculate where this will all go. You guys know my belief XRP is not going to be classified as a security. We heard Jay Clayton, again, chairman, even say, if it's not in their jurisdiction and this crypto a crypto asset is not specifically and obviously a security, we don't have to even classify it and say it's not. That's not our job. Exactly. So, hey, CFTC could, you know, declare it. I got a phone call. Um, CFTC could declare it as a commodity. I think that we're going to see some type of, uh, you know, new type of classification, potentially utility, exchange token, currency. Who knows? All right. So we will simply see, just wanted to share that and feel free to let me know your thoughts down below as well. But I do think it's fun speculating with that. All right, now I want to show you a little V chain chart. And yes, TA does work with crypto guys. I, you know, have groups of people that are wildly successful. They follow, but again, markets adapt. So indicators have to adapt as well. So I just want to show you one little trend we're seeing on the right. This is a lend. I believe it's pronounced what Ave, Ave. I'm not really sure, but Obviously, Lend and VeChain are two coins that were in that list of Coinbase that were going to be potentially added to Coinbase in the coming weeks. Well, Lend was, you know, way ahead and has been pumping on a weekly basis forever. And one little thing to note, and we'll see if it happens again, not financial advice, is as we see this yellow line, this 50 MA cross through this 100 moving average, we kind of get a little pump, whether it's before or after, and we're approaching that point. So, you know, I think it's a safe assumption on my end as an investor in VeChain that I could be seeing another pump. I mean, it doesn't mean it's going to be to scale and go right to, you know, three cents by any means. I'm just saying, you know, we can absolutely see some growth like this. VeChain is a sleeper. Deep state China, even as uh, King Solomon says, the connections are surreal. And there's not a lot of projects like XRP and VeChain. But I do think that, you know, right now we're at the very bottom of this market. So I do see tremendous upside. Now do not FOMO in, do your research for a few weeks, you know, sit on the sidelines. Do not ever invest into anything unless you fully understand it and the risks. All right, so just wanted to show that. And there were also other lists um, or other tokens that were included in the Coinbase list, such as, you know, Digibyte. So expect something big with them as well. All right, again, charts, fundamentals, TA, the fractal, all this is lining up with the news. Coincidence? I, I don't think so. All right, right here, this is really cool. So again, I am Legion just sharing this in case you forgot. So remember, back in 2016, we have a Ripple and R3, the banking consortium, essentially Goldman Sachs, Lehman Brothers, like we've been saying, team up with 12 banks to trial XRP for cross-border payments. I know you guys know this, but I just love this quote right here. Ripple is proud to work with R3 and its member banks to institutionalize XRP as a bridge asset. That's not me hyping, that is simply what Ripple has said. Right. And we can go even right here with Microsoft. We do know they have a validator on the XRP ledger. We know the connections with obviously even Amazon Web Services and Azure. Just pay attention to these groups. And yes, I know that, you know, many of these blockchains are working with, you know, cloud cloud hosting should be no surprise. But again, just pay attention to this with Microsoft. We know the relationship with Mojo Loop and Interledger Protocol, which is created by Ripple. All right. So Microsoft's Marley Gray Ripple and IOP will be the fabric of multi-chain future. So there won't be one blockchain to rule them all. Exactly. There's not going to be a single ledger, says Marley Gray, who leads Microsoft's Azure's blockchain as a service. So BAAS instead of software as a service, this is blockchain as a service. I know many of you have seen this, just like I said in the previous video. 
I think it was released this morning. There's not going to be a single ledger, but what's more probable to happen, because you're not going to get every group, institution, or person to agree on using one blockchain or one you know, distributed ledger, what's more probable is there's going to be protocols to enable interoperability between these applications, just like ILP, just you know, even what the folks over at uh, Quant, Overledger, are working on. Pay attention to these types of things. These are not, per se, they're not disruptors, they are enablers. Pay attention. All right, so let's see. Ethereum's the first out of the gates. We actually went to Ripple first early on in the process, but as we stayed to learning, Ripple starts to make a lot of sense, especially when you throw the Interledger protocol into the mix. Remember what we talk about, guys. XRP, the native digital asset, ILP, the protocol for bridging these networks, or I should say ledgers. All right, we have the actual ledger, XRP ledger, which is agnostic as well, built on the same principles of the internet. And obviously ILP was gifted to the W3C. We have Codius. I don't know why people think that's a dead project. I'm not saying Cobalt, I'm saying Codius. Again, smart contract hosting. This will be massive. And I, I literally just have zero doubt in my mind. All right, right here, I am Legion again, showing this. So new interoperability solution. This is old, by the way, but I just want to point it out because we know Accenture, one of the original investors in Ripple, helps with digital transformation and integrations with, you know, R3, which everyone forgets about. Um, you know, all of these projects, again, that we've seen testing, you know, ILP or without ILP. Um, helping with R3, Swift, all of this digital transformation for DLT. So we have Hyperledger Fabric. There's going to be different types of Hyperledgers, as we know. Corda, again, can settle via XRP. We got DA and Quorum, all right? And I know you guys have already seen this stuff a million times. No surprise. All right, now I really like this. So I saw I Am Legion share this again. So big banks and derivatives, why another financial crisis is inevitable. So pay close attention to this. I found this to be pretty, pretty interesting. So I already highlighted it. Let me exit out of that. So right here, and this is back in the day, all right? So what occurred with, during the financial crisis? The root cause wasn't just the reckless lending and the excessive risk-taking. The problem at the core was a lack of transparency. I think we understand DLT can obviously help with this because they'll all have a shared trusted ledger, okay, history of transactions, or even with, you know, logistics and tracking, record keeping, etc. So after the Lehman's collapse, no one could understand any particular bank's risks from derivative tra trading. And so no bank wanted to lend or to trade with any other bank. So nobody was lending, there was no money movement, the velocity of money is already slow. As you can see with quantitative easing, essentially the Federal Reserve printing more than we ever have, in history, I mean, we can look at this year alone, and it makes 2008 look like a baby in terms of printing money. You guys can do the math on that inflation as well. So those that are investing and in diversifying into the suppressed assets like precious metals and crypto assets that have already been kind of enduring a two-year bear market, I think are going to be in a very good position, and that is a very smart hedge. So because all the big banks had been involved to an unknown degree in risky derivative trading, guys, there's bad guys in real life, everyone, you know, there's corruption everywhere. Yes, institutions and banks have corruption, but they also have good people. So no one could tell whether any particular financial institution might suddenly implode. That's scary, all right? So, I mean, you, we can take this into so many directions with velocity of money, with trust, with, you know, distribution. Um, so many benefits. I think you guys understand that DLT is going to be groundbreaking. It's going to be shaking the system per se. And I wanted to just kind of quote Christine Lagarde, former International Monetary Fund Director. And now she is, of course, the president of the European Central Bank. Coincidence? No. Okay, let's keep going. So, yep, so even I am Legion showing this, why Ripple will become a monster. Now, again, we're talking about the derivatives market. Why were, you know, analysts so unsure? Because the derivatives market is a very intangible market. We have estimates from $500 trillion to $1.4 quadrillion. You're going to hear the average when people say tokenizing the derivatives market around $700 trillion. $700 trillion. And I'm not saying that your crypto asset or this crypto asset is going to do all of that, but I'm just showing you how much value there is that still needs to be transferred. So you guys can do your own research, but again, this will be the asset class that swallows all others because it has to travel over this. All right. Next up, I wanted to read this quote by XRP underscore Stort. So this is by, we can see former U.S. Trade Representative Chief Staff Jameson Greer. All right, so right here, reality is cryptocurrency is here to stay. It's not something that's going away. It's not a fad. I think a lot of policymakers and lawmakers think that it's a fad. Well, there are also old timers that have been stuck in their ways for decades, um, but it's not here. It's 
but it's not. It's here to stay, which includes public digital currencies. Again, I don't even need to remind you with the digital dollar project with former chairman Chris, you know, Christopher Giancarlo. Again, he's an advisor for Ripple. Not a coincidence. These people are the most institutionally connected people in the world. And I don't want to just talk about XRP. I believe in many assets, but from a fundamental perspective and it being one of the most one of the most suppressed assets, obviously in the market right now on a weekly basis when i look at the charts and i see who's under certain fib pivots it is a sleeper and i do not believe that will last forever that's just my full opinion all right and then right here we'll just finish up with this and i can work on another video so xrp underscore short so short story bank state cryptocurrencies are used for illegal activities and are worthless we remember that remember jamie diamond of you know jp morgan all of that you know now occ then lets all nationally chartered banks in the u.s provide custody services for cryptocurrencies next story banks will never use xrp a absolutely we're going to be hearing the same thing as always all right um, I've saw in other news, and we're going to talk about uh, SmartStream as well. They've had proof of concepts with XRP in the past, things that they're going to be launching in the coming months. Very, very interesting. Also, I did see in recent news on Finextra, we saw Standard Chartered, also an investor in Ripple, no surprise. They invested in a post-trade foreign exchange platform, and they're calling it Cobalt, which is really funny because we do know, you know, Cobalt running on the XRP ledger in the past. Um, just wanted to kind of show you that little coincidence and guys stay positive in this ecosystem You're gonna start seeing less anger in the market. I know people are probably upset that XRP is still under a dollar it, It's fine. Just understand that every angry comment you see on YouTube or on Twitter It's just people that are upset because they're not in profit when this market turns around for their particular asset They're gonna lighten up a bit. All right, and I said that same thing on Twitter Stay positive, guys. So with that, I appreciate it as always. Thank you so much to my top channel members. I appreciate it, guys. And again, we'll definitely have a beer in the future. Be more 1113, Lunar Phoenix, Jamie XRP, Crypto Beginner, Ken Melendez, XRP Older 4, XRP Life, and all others. Hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Thanks.